Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inputs Outputs. I'm your host, Jeff Sangpil. In this show, we break down the nuts and bolts of professional equipment for the broadcast, post-production, and audiovisual industries. Visit keycodemedia.com to watch full-length product demonstrations, followed by Q&A from users just like you. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into NDI Bridge. Bridge is the latest free tool which allows you to share high quality NDI video and audio sources from anywhere in the world. I'm really excited to be interviewing Chris Burgos from New Tech. Every time I chat with Chris, my head starts exploding with ideas, new possibilities on how we can improve all of our live production co capacities. And maybe I'll just say that Chris leaves me optimistic about the future of video production. NDI is definitely exceeding expectations in the six years that it's been around. As the product has matured, it is shown to be an extremely reliable software-defined platform that delivers high-quality video, flexible frame rates, 32-bit audio, and advanced color spaces, all over an IP network. Nearly a thousand companies are shipping NDI-enabled products, from camera systems, video switchers, graphic systems, to monitors, and many more applications. And users everywhere are praising the ability to ditch traditional SDI and its limitations for a much more flexible network-based workflow that scales beyond single facilities now with ease. With NDI Bridge, you can now connect two or more entire NDI networks over the WAN, that's the internet, from anywhere. So a quick infomercial, if you have any questions about NDI for your TV studio, live production, house of worship, esports, school campus, or government facility, contact us here at Keycode Media at keycodemedia.com. We've got a team of experienced systems engineers that help find the right products, installing equipment, and supporting thousands of our customers across the country. Okay, Chris, it would be great if you could give us a better introduction of not only yourself, but also what NDI Bridge means for everyone in the community that's tuning in. Let's start with a wow. I know you spent the last hour using NDI Bridge to connect your NDI network in New Jersey with our NDI network here in greater Los Angeles. What do you got for us, man? Jeff, well, thank you for this. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we really wanna showcase a lot of what's going on in NDI and, and you know, talking about my own self, this, the advantages of Bridge are so amazing. You get so many cool little things and the iterations that have happened over five generations of NDI, you really start to appreciate all of them. So. We're talking about production. That's my background. I come from live production, whether it be sports, events, and streaming. And in that world, we really care about getting our sources into our system. And what Bridge allows us to do is to say, hey, any studio anywhere in the world is operating in an NDI environment. I can grab those sources. For today's purposes, we're going to make this very concrete. You guys have some NDI-enabled devices, uh, a TriCaster, uh, a PTZ camera, and I'm going to bring those to my side over here in New Jersey. So we're basically crossing the distance of the country going from Cali to Jersey and still getting those sources in pristine quality. So I have, uh, there's a PTZ camera showing and Jeff, you can just give us a little wave and so we can see you in there. And uh, that is being brought in via bridge. Um, it just so happens that it happens to be one of our great NDI partners coming in. So we have a bird dog camera on the far side and, and we love to see how wide and diverse NDI has grown. And hey, here's a great third party partner in bird dog. So we got a bird dog camera coming in. I also have your guys TriCaster source coming into my TriCaster. So we can do these kinds of high level collaborative events with different kinds of content going on. So you could be producing a piece of content and I could be your web team, but rather than my web team be, you know, another studio source, another, another space allotted in my environment, I'm actually just gonna send them the whole feed remote. And because we're using Bridge, we get a bunch of cool features beyond this. Obviously in NDI, I have my video and audio already in sync coming across. So that's a really cool benefit in this workflow. Another thing I had are things like PTC control. I have the ability to record your feeds and I really start to change what I do in that IP space. We, we, we talk about how NDI is, is bi-directional. I'm taking a source from you guys and you guys are taking a source from me. Um, so you start to expand and really get deep into what NDI is capable of. And I think at a base level of production, everyone can appreciate, hey, I can grab a camera, I can grab a source from another system. That is gonna be really crucial to doing my productions. 
So what about uh, something like teleprompter for someone who's, you know, at home or at, at a distance? Is there a way to feed that from, you know, the house to, to someone's home? I think, uh, and also house of worship we talk about, right? Like, so I'm going to showcase how easy this is to bring into to the TriCaster. So just like we brought the bird dog camera in, just like we brought any PTZ camera in, I open up my bridge. I'm going to look for your source. And so uh, we talked about, how we have those mixes coming across. And now I have a remote prompter coming in from your guy's studio. If you guys want, can you guys sort of scrub back on your guy's side so we can see this happen in real time? So I have this coming in. I brought an in input 11. And as we see, as they're scrubbing through, I now have that content coming in over. Um, so this is super, super easy to, 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 pull, to deploy. And it's all happening with Bridge. So outside of, outside of those things, what about having control over a return monitor, which would come in very handy for House of Worship and other live broadcast in environments. There's the one over my shoulder right now. Definitely. Uh, I could see a, a ton of plays. So what, what, I, what I'm doing is uh, you guys are going to take my feed, which is actually not the feed I'm mixing on my side of the world. So I'm recording my screen. And just to really showcase what's happening at home, you guys are going to take a different mix from my TriCaster 2, and that will feed the monitor behind you. Uh, and so you'll see me behind you in my green screen virtual set. What I'm doing on my TriCaster is totally different than that. I'm still working with my base program set up over here. I still have your teleprompter. I still have my TriCaster screen being captured. I still have the, the camera coming in from the, the, the bird dog side. So all of these pieces on, on, my, on my side are working in conjunction with, but I'm not limited to what you're sending. So I still have the opportunity to go in and grab my sources like I'm doing right now. And none of that is colliding with or interfering with what you guys are doing, which is pulling a source from my TriCaster across. And you, and like I said before, you'll see me sort of in the corner behind over Jeff's shoulder. Um, that feed is the uh, mix feed coming from my TriCaster over the bridge. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of NDI. So hopefully this presentation will help you understand a little bit about what we talked about with the intricacies of what's going on with bridge, but we want to make this really simple to understand. We're talking about NDI bridge and it's, pretty much our simplicity for remote collaboration. And we're really focusing today on collaborating between two new tech centric solutions. So on the key code side, you guys have a TriCaster 2. And on my side, I have a TriCaster 2. Here's what Bridge looks like at a glance. It's a free application that enables NDI and video and audio to pass over the WAN. It's really simple to launch and it doesn't require a cloud service or VPN. It really handles a lot of the simplicity of getting your connectivity across. And one thing I'll note is on the side there, uh, there's a little clipboard. It's very easy to actually copy that information and pass that over. Actually, when we were doing our tests, I just gave you guys that clipboard information and you guys are able to punch that into your machine over in Burbank. What NDI Bridge is not, it is not its own cloud service. So when we think about things like uh, Amazon or Google's cloud services or Microsoft, it is not a cloud service. It's also not a VPN. I like to point those two things out up front because a lot of times when we're talking about remote productions, these two concepts are very often thrown around. And so just understanding that NDI Bridge is not a cloud service and it's not a VPN that, you know, I want to make that distinction. Now it offers a lot of those cool functionalities, but it isn't either of those two services. Um, it's also not an ISP. Um, I always like to highlight this because you do need an internet service provider that is going to give you a, a su suitable amount of bandwidth. In Bridge, you can set how much you want each Bridge feed to sort of use from a bandwidth perspective. It isn't, there's no magic at play here. Your, your total network bandwidth provided by your ISP has to allow for that. So your download and upload speeds need to be able to support those feeds. Beautifully enough, Bridge also isn't a paid service. You just need to have a computer that you can run the bridge on. Now we have a couple of limitations here. We do require it to be a fairly contemporary computer, so something that's running Windows 10. Um, we also want it with a nice processor and a pretty contemporary GPU. The big reasons for those two things are the number of sources that that system can handle and the ability to do multiple 4K encodes or decodes in NDI Bridge. You're going to want those nicer systems. Let's think a quick visualization. Let's look at what a quick visualization would be of working with Bridge. So on one side here on the left part of my screen, I have uh, a computer with NDI Bridge running, a TriCaster, an NC2IO, and a 3Play2. 
And I'm going to connect that to the wide area network. And on the other side of that wide area ne network connection, I have a computer running bridge. That's going to join my bridge. I have another TriCaster. I have a Spark. And I have a PTZ camera. Once I have that connection established, just like we showcased in our demonstration, those sources can all be shared over the wide area network. And that's what we've been doing in our demonstration today. I can add another TriCaster, I can add another computer, another NDI source. And effectively, all of these sources are treated like they're on a local area network connection. Now, I wanna just make one final point before we're going over this sort of overview of what Bridge is. Bridge isn't magic. And so right now, while we're traversing the, uh, the country here, we're going from West Coast to East Coast with our NDI feeds, there's going to be some inherent latency, but that's just the nature of the physics. The light can only go so fast over the public WAN. What that really means is that within the continental 48, you should be ex experiencing somewhere between 250 and 350 milliseconds of latency from point to point, but it can be greater. Uh, and then again, we're talking about this being US centric, but the WAN is all over the world. And so you could easily connect with sources in Europe and Asia, all, you know, all parts of the globe, as long as they're on that bridge. And then once people join that bridge, as the circle showcasing, everyone can share short sources back and forth. So these are all some points to keep in mind. And I always like to highlight that as amazing as NDI bridges, it's not magic. It will never make the packets come faster than we can bend the light around the country. And, and sometimes that, that may be the difference between using a bridge-based application or using something that's infinitely more uh, costly to deploy uh, and, and more sort of uh, complex. But the beauty of Bridge is in its simplicity and its ability to connect NDI devices with just a few button clicks and sharing some information. There are a couple of major pain points that I just want to cover for one last time as we're going through this of what Bridge solves. There's zero cost to entry because the Bridge software costs nothing. There are no subscription or renewal fees. There's no need for a cloud service or a VPN. Also, because Bridge uses the wide area network, oftentimes it requires less IT to manage multiple sites. I don't need to have an IT manager working with more than just one single connection going outbound. And that is the beauty of what Bridge delivers in its simplicity is that from that one connection, I can gain so much in my local area network as if it was connected to all of these remote sites. Um, let's talk about audio, Dante and that sort of stuff. How does that work through Bridge? So the beauty of what Bridge enables is that a lot of new tech systems are capable of working with lots of audio standards. So I could hook up an XLR cable to a TriCaster 2. I could have another TriCaster 2 working in Dante. And in Bridge, both of those systems speak NDI. So now I've mixed and matched two different audio setups, especially when we get deeper into the audio IP standards. As we, as we have NDI audio that's working in VST plugins, and we have support for uh, AS67 and uh, WMD, like as there's more and more complex audio setups out there, we sort of think about, well, what does my studio work with? You kind of want to work in the standards that your audio engineer is going to best be able to maximize. When we were doing our tests up front, you guys were tweaking some audio setups to make sure everything sounds beautiful and crisp. Well, the beauty of Bridge is, when I bridge that connection over, I don't have to have a uh, uh, Dante expert on my side. He's just going to come in through NDI audio on my side. And it just works really beautifully. So I think about the ability to mix and match different audio standards seamlessly between multiple sites. That's a big benefit of Bridge. That it is. So how does this work with a post-production environment? How do you get these signals in? So Bridge does an amazing job of enabling a lot of cool post-production workflows. Let's take something that's uh, a little bit difficult today. I'm going to have my local studio doing a full-scale production. Maybe it's a high-end sports production, high-end news, maybe something esports related. While all of that content is being generated, I want to be able to capture and edit that pretty much as quickly as I can because today everything lives as fast as you can post it online, right? So I can have an NDI-enabled recording system like the NRS, and because the NRS speaks in NDI, it can be enabled via bridge. So I can take bridge a, 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 a machine with bridge in my local studio and connect it with a remote studio. And now I'm grabbing those NDI feeds in and recording them locally. And because I'm recording them with the NRS, I have all the edit capacities that are presented in that solution. And I can be remaking that sort of production 
make it post enabled and play it back out via bridge. The, the sort of possibilities to do this in a connection, uh, things we talk about, think about when we're thinking about like satellite feeds, you know, this is now being all replaced by IP connectivity between two sites. And it's just that flexible and easy to deploy. So I could have my NRS capturing, my NRS playing back, editing that content all on that same bridge connection. And that's the beauty of the bi-directional nature. All right, that's great. So the one thing we didn't touch on is security. How secure is NDI Bridge? NDI Bridge is the first time that we've introduced direct encryption into what you're doing. Once you launch the program, whether you're be, if you're going to be the host, you set the encryption key that everyone needs to know. So when the application launches by default, it will actually generate a pretty intense encryption key for you. Uh, with all things security related, you know, the more complexity that's added, the harder it is to sort of have an attack or vulnerability be exposed. So we're giving you a pretty intense default security encryption key. However, this is at the user's leisure to set. Uh, so, you know, you could set it as simple as a couple of characters, although Bridge will warn you if you are not as complex as you might need to be. It'll say, hey, you, can, you need to add some more characters and strings to this stuff. Uh, but the fact that it enables you to add that encryption key and only people that have that encryption key can join your bridge pretty much means that unless someone you know, has that information, they won't be able to access your NDI content. And I think this is a big expansion of what we were doing in Access Manager. And if we sort of combine these two features together where Access Manager says, hey, I want to distribute different NDI centers. Well, now when I combine that with Bridge, I can say, hey, I'm going to access this particular NDI studio and encrypt it on this particular key. And I can run multiple instances of bridge in my facility. So if I'm a news organization and I need to have encrypted connections with my foreign contacts, I can do that. It's really, really slick to deploy. NDI has been around for quite a few iterations. This is number five. How has the product improved in terms of reliability and security since its inception? And what are new things that people are going to see who haven't looked at NDI for quite a while? Yeah, I think if you're... First experience with NDI was six years ago when it was released. Um, you're going to see a lot of different kinds of steps we've taken to make NDI more inclusive. So at the basic level, we support more ways to traverse your network. With everything we're doing in NDI 5 and Bridge, we're using our UDP as our network protocol. Um, that is our best chance at making sure that we get our network packets reliably, that's the R and R UDP, it's a reliable UDP, uh, across the wide area network to make sure that they get delivered on the other side. So what we've been doing today in our sort of conversation and making sure I get signals from you to me and me to you, that's all leveraging that R UDP. Over the course of NDI generations, we have actually five different ways to traverse networks and our, our UDP is the most recent we just discussed. There's also MTCP and various versions of UDP and TCP underneath that. All of these things mean that in a lot of environments, I should be able to get NDI packets to flow pretty seamlessly. So at a base level, we've enabled a lot more ways to just go over your network. We've also enabled in NDI 5 the ability to add encryption, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so th that's a cool feature that we can do in Bridge. Um, the other thing we've done, and this is very much based upon the user experience, is NDI goes through sometimes stepping iterations. And so uh, a major one that was like sort of acknowledged by the public was NDI 3.5. Because NDI very much lives in consumers' hands, as we get feedback from people using our products, so using TriCasters, using Sparks, using PTZ cameras, we deploy better versions of NDI in all our products. With NDI 4 and software, we were able to start to work with HX signals. HX signals typically required hardware processors, and now we could do that in software. And you now see that in NDI 5, the ability to sort of uh, push out some NDIHX sources could be really beneficial because maybe I don't have a tremendous amount of network in the wide area network space, but in my local area network space, I have tons of networking capacity. So all of these little features add together to compile this very expansive NDI. That is what we're talking about with NDI 5. And then when we use Bridge, you really start to understand and feel as a user and as a production what those benefits are. Because all of these things that you might think that might trip you up, hey, is the audio and video going to be in sync? Or what about 
these two mix and match setups, you know, over here, we're working with SRT. Well, SRT is a direct connect feed, but if I bring it into an NDI space, I can then distribute that. Oh, hey, I can actually take an SRT feed with Bridge and now push it over to multiple studios. The, the possibilities really get really large. And, and we've seen a tremendous amount of, of third-party partners come on board with, uh, you know, what we're doing at Viz Group, uh, New Tech and, and, and NDI. You know, people are adopting this more PTZ manufacturers. There's more editing softwares, there's more third-party devices, hardware, software. So many things have expanded upon the, just what NDI has been doing. So it has gotten so much better in six years and it's not stopping. We put so much time and effort into developing NDI first and foremost, whether that's how it traverses the network, the sort of like cool feature sets that we improve. Um, and, and in that, I'll just put this last little caveat. We just recently announced that there's a special version of the SDK. Um, and a lot of people had questions, hey, what's going on in there? Um, it is the first time that we're putting SDK development behind a little bit of a, a, a charge, but what we're doing in that SDK is eventually going to hit all forms of NDI. Really complex things for the future, like timing in the IP space, like NDI sync that are necessary for the future of things like AR and VR. That stuff is being developed by some of the top level NDI developers internally and around the world. So when you're working with NDI, not only have we improved upon it year after year after year, it made it capable of doing more and more underneath the hood, but we're not stopping. We're working with so many third-party partners and we're even including some really futuristic stuff that I think you're always gonna find that the highway keeps being built with NDI. There's always more to do. There's always more to you know tackle. And, and these workflows, you know, five years ago, maybe didn't make, weren't super relevant, right? You could just hook up SDI cables. But today in the world we live in, this production that we're doing, the fact that today we spun up a bridge server and we had a conversation before our, our call and now we're on this, this call and, and everything's just working great. You know, I, I don't know, Jeff, you've been in the industry longer than I have. How much money would that have cost in like sat trucks and like specific network feeds? It would have been astronomical, right? It would have it would have been hugely astronomical. It just would have been crazy. So it makes things a lot simpler. <laughs> and today, for all intents and purposes, I got out of bed, ironed my shirt, and clicked the button on my computer. And here we are doing all of this really simply. And I think when you when you get into NDI. There's all the cool factor. There's all the advanced scientific stuff that we're doing, all that sort of cutting edge stuff. And then at the end of the day, the user experience is simplicity. So I, I think that's what, like, in, in, in a nutshell, those are the improvements we position it so that it continues to be as advanced as it can be and also as easy and accessible as having church volunteers, middle schoolers, you know, uh, secretaries around the world actually leverage this pro protocol. Thanks for watching Inputs Outputs. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast to receive future episodes. And then follow Keycode Media on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to receive news on additional AV broadcast and post-production technology content. See you all next time.